waiting for her to come back. You want to start, guys? Okay, let's call this meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, announcements. The Town Council is scheduled to meet on the following dates. Thursday, this Thursday, February 16th at 7 p.m. in the Matthew Thornton Room is a special meeting. Thursday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. again here in the Matthew Thornton Room, a regular meeting. And Thursday, March 9th at 7 p.m. again in this room, a regular town council meeting. Uh, Eileen's not here for the moment, so when she comes back, I will touch base with her and see if she has announcements. Uh, PFOA update, there's really nothing. Uh, as far as I know, over 700 letters have been sent out and they don't have the 200 yet. So, I'm not Well, sure. I signed up and, oh, we're going to send you a voucher. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. Okay. The other, the other thing is if you noticed I sent out an email Monday or Tuesday about the uh, settlement in yes. Ohio. DuPont? Yeah. The C8 uh, research process, $671 million. Yeah. Uh, well, don't forget what the take is for the lawyers. <laughs> it's usually a third. Okay, announcements. I we can go back and Okay. Um, the Parks and Recreation Department invites you to join us at Wasserman Park for the twenty fifth annual Winter Carnival on Saturday, February twenty fifth for an all afternoon full of free outdoor activities, games, educational workshops and much more. Some of the activities being offered this year include youth ice fishing derby, cardboard box sled contest, free snowshoe rentals, ice carving demonstrations, s'mores, and much more. So for complete details, please visit the Parks and Recreation Department website um, or call 882-1046. Uh, once again, I'd like to remind everyone <coughs> who has a February um, renewal of their um, motor vehicle permit that due to a state of New Hampshire Department of Motor Vehicles software upgrade, the town clerk's office will not be able to con conduct any motor vehicle registration or related transactions from this Friday, February 17th, through Tuesday, February 21st. Twenty-first. Please plan accordingly. If you have a new registration, a temporary plate um, that will be expiring, or your registration renewal is due during the month of February. 2017 dog licenses are now available. All dogs four months and older are required by state law to be licensed. Please contact the town clerk's office with any questions. Thank you. That's it. Okay, we've done that PFOA update. Comments from the press or public? Seeing none. Recognitions, resignations, and retirements. Recognition of retirement of town employee, Dennis Beauregard. He is unable to come this evening, but we want to make sure that he will get his recognition. Uh, he's in recognition of his retirement from the Solid Waste Division of Public Works with more than 11 years of service from March 13, 2005 to February 15, 2017. So I wish you luck, and as I always say in retirement, stay healthy so you can enjoy it. Congratulations. 
Appointments. Town Hall Sidewalk Replacement Plan. Don, you want to come down? Submitted by Deputy Public Works Director, Town Engineer Don Tamala. Brief overview of the proposed town, town Hall Sidewalk Replacement Plan. And she's passing out pictures. Yes, Eileen, go right ahead. Um, I just wanted to give you, just hang on to them. I just wanted to give you an, kind of what, what this is all about. Um, about when, when uh, was it about, about a year ago at the end of the year, we had some um, funds left over and we were going to spend some of them on projects that we had anticipated getting, doing anyway. Um, and one of them was a sidewalk project out here at Town Hall. And uh, we had budgeted $75,000 for it. Turns out that the project um, is much more complicated, as it always is, than we anticipated. And uh, Don has also put in some enhancements to it so that it looks nice. Um, and the, co the total costs are approaching $95,000 now. So we have 75,000 budgeted. So I wanted Don to come in and go over the plan with you in brief um, so that you could see what you're getting for your $95,000 if you concur. Thank you, Don. Go right ahead, Don. All right. Um, I decided to give you some plans tonight because the drawings are probably a little bit farther away than <laughs> <laughs> you might like to be able to see. Um, the first one on the right-hand side over here is the existing conditions. And this building over here is the uh, east wing or the town office building. This is the building that we're in, or the west wing, whatever, however you want to call that. We've got an existing sidewalk right now that runs around in the front of the building. And you'll note that out there right now that it's just concrete. There's no um, granite curb. So what happens, the plows hit it, and it breaks up the con concrete. Um, also, there is a ramp on this side to the end of the south end of the east wing. And there's also a ramp going up to the connector between the two buildings. All of that will be taken out and replaced. And we're proposing to do this in phases, um, to do a minimal disruption to uh, everybody inside. And the way the uh, bid specs have been written is so that this section in here and the connector building will be done at the same time and within a two-week time frame. And we're going to talk to the uh, senior staff to be able to determine the best time to do that because obviously that is the connection between the two buildings. So we'll need to work out the logistics for how to get the people into the building um, or, or both buildings um, as needed. And that's something we'll, we'll work out as we're going along. But we would like to get this out to bid sooner so that we can get a contractor for this year. Um, right now, tentatively, we've got that section being done in the middle of July. We believe that might be the best the two weeks in the middle of July where the least amount of people come in. Um, so on this bigger plan here, I did a blow up. This is the proposed area. One thing I noted from previously was that there was no sidewalk on the west end of the west building. And this, what this will do would be to connect the sidewalk that's along Babusik Lake Road, tie it right in. So anybody with a wheelchair they can come up. They can't come up the stairs that are in the front here to the connector, so they'll be able to come up and go right around and be able to have full access to all of the buildings, and they're not into the parking lot, so they'll be protected. Again, as I mentioned, there will be a granite curb that's running around the whole exterior of this in order to protect the concrete. The sidewalks will be five feet wide. Um, another thing the plan will do is to bring the sidewalks up to the ADA, current ADA compliance. 
Um, you can only go a certain distance before you have to have a landing, and then you can rise again. So you'll find that in this stretch be connecting between the two buildings, you'll find that there is a level landing in the middle of that. That's because the length was too long to be able to do from one end to the other, so I broke it up. Um, and grade-wise, this is a little bit under what is required for the slope, so it's a, a better slope than what was there presently. The other feature we're going to do is to take out all of those um, columns and to have those replaced, so we're going to support the roof, have new columns, and we're going to have um, wrap those posts in a plastic, so they, they actually look quite nice. There'll be a little foot, and this will also do the same type of decorative along the top. So it's more architectural. So, yeah, correct, and it's a PVC, so that you don't have to, you'll have minimum amount of uh, maintenance associated with that. Um, and they're not a whole lot of money. They believe they're $144 a piece for eight of them, or $144 a piece, and there'll be eight of them. So that's the basic. Um, the other thing we're doing is protecting this other side, and we needed to widen this in order to have two-way traffic within that area. We're also going to put connect into existing uh, granite curb, connect around, and that will protect all of the sprinkler heads that are constantly having to be replaced out there. Um, it'll actually put them up behind and also on the other side. So there'll actually be a 20 foot distance between the yellow line, the fire line which is being proposed, and the um, uh, new granite curb. And this section here will again protect all of the um, sprinkler heads that are there. Um, the, the other end, we're doing the same type of thing over here with that existing ramp. We have to break it in order to be able to get up there properly. Um, let's see. The other thing I've got proposed, there was, um, uh, well, Oh, there are the tip downs, the tip downs with the um, the grates, the little bubbles for the um, handicap. There are several of those. Those are right in here, right over here, right here, and right there. Oh, I see. So, so, so they're so they, required. Okay. So the wheelchairs can. Right. It stops them before they get out into the. Um, The tree? the tree? Oh, the tree, yes. There's there a is tree? a tree right here beside the walk and at the covered connector. Um, we're proposing to take that down. And there's also the antenna, which is right beside it. Um, that tree is kind of overhanging into the roof and the system. Um, I, I would suggest taking it down. And the antenna is useless? Is that what? Not used. No. It's all, it, it's all disconnected. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Finley? Um, thanks, Don. Just a couple of quick things. One, if you could just clarify for me, you said you were going to be doing something on the, I guess, southwest entrance where it was two-way traffic. I didn't hear what you were going to do there. This, this entrance here and this section over here, are being made to be 20 feet wide, which okay. will allow two-way traffic. Right. Uh, and, okay, thanks. And then the only other thing, and I think I know the answer because I don't see anything that you can do. Is, is there anything to be done to avoid coning off the sidewalk during, the, you know, when snow's on the roof from crashing down and killing people? Short of putting saw horses up. This this will not address that problem. So no. nothing that could be done. Um, unless you talk to an architect that could design either a, another roof section or something to cover that sidewalk um, but then it's going to go to right down into the where people are driving so I was meaning moving the you know moving it a little bit but I I, I think I know the answer because I'm looking at the damn oh. drawing but uh, it was wishful thinking but we can always if, build if, a snow shed like they do on the railroads <laughs> to get it away we, from you know all the way across <laughs> to the other side of the street we'd probably have to pull this out at least the width 
that yeah. of the sidewalk. I mean, it could be done. Um, a lot of it's all more money. Side. Yeah. But I, um, with Deputy Director Fox in the back, I'm sure that he'll take this under advice. I mean, director, 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 director. Deputy's there. Director Fox in the background. I'm sure he's taking it under advisement, and we'll see what we can do with whether we can put up snow gates or brakes or on the slate. That would be the solution more than moving this, because to move this, we'd have to go 10 feet into that road, which means 10 feet into the right. other side. Taking away parking on. We'll take away all the handicap spots by that. Yeah. So we'll have to look at that on the roof, and that's more of a roof issue. Right. Thanks. Any Thank you. Questions. Try. So you on the on the side, of, <laughs> I don't know what side it is. South side, the uh, you broke the ramp up going up to where the town council office is. Yes. Um, but that's not really a handicap accessible door or area. Do we really need to make that a handicap accessible ramp? Um, I mean, it goes. A, it, pardon. It's our second form in case something has happened in the middle. That used to be the entryway into town hall a long time ago, and it was done so that it's our second form in case handicap. People need to go up and meet in the council chambers. Well, can they do that in the other building? I mean, there's stairs on the side by your office, but right? But they can come in, I guess. The so there's only one ramp accessible there. area right. there. Right. I, I guess um, that we also need to be prepared if there's a council member that's handicapped. Well, they can come to, in the other side and get around. I mean, that there's access to that room. <laughs> I'm just just saying we're talking you about have cost factors. To say, Kyle? I would just add that in the phasing plan, um, when the middle section is being worked on, the ramp on the right through the council chambers is proposed to be used as a entrance. as a public entrance for for handicapped folks to get in. Okay, fine. Dan? Seems like a waste. Um, there's so many things about this project I don't like, so I'm not really on board. Um, we have a beautiful, restored, colonial wood structure, over 100-year-old town hall, and it's, at, it's, it's appropriate that we have wooden columns and a covered roof, not PVC plastic. That would be so such such the wrong thing to do to this setting in this building, in the historic nature of what. It just doesn't fit. That kind of product does not belong on town hall, in my opinion. And I don't want to encourage someone in a wheelchair coming up Babusik Lake Road. That's not appropriate. I don't want to have a welcoming sidewalk to Babusik Lake Road. Unfortunately, whether you like it or not, of a town of 28,000 people, that is a car road. That is for automobiles and traffic coming and going to the center of our major intersection as it comes into DW Highway. So I might be on board to dress up the back sidewalk because that's where all the traffic and all the cars that the major vast majority of residents come and use as they park their cars and come into town. But but why would anybody be coming from Babusik Lake Road? I have to admit, I agree with you there. Yeah, it just I mean, that, they, they park not, in the parking lot and come from there. It's the age-old debate that we have about sidewalks and people walking, and I just don't view, I've never viewed my community as a walking community. It's not what I view my town as. But I'm not <laughs> trying to oppose normal maintenance of, of sidewalk use. That's fine. But I'm just not sure... And, and having our ramps all redone, they, they were just, you know, stained and the wood's good. I mean, it just seems perfectly adequate, our, the back staircase to the council chambers on the other side. I just see a lot of work that doesn't really have to be done. That's it. Thank you. Tom? Yeah, Dan, been to my house, right? Portico on the side yard. Did you come over that afternoon after I had my knee replaced? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, we have PVC wrapping around the posts that support that portico, okay? And it looks very natural, uh, and it looks like it fits. And my house is one of the oldest houses in town. So it predates the town hall by over 100 years. So it's not a, it's not a bad choice to do that, and the maintenance issues on it are significant. I don't have to paint it again. 
I personal preference. No, I understand. It's I understand. personal. It's a it's a aesthetic thing. I don't disagree with you, but one of seven, I'm saying no. That's all. Jackie, where would the post be? I I missed that exact. Right where they location. are today. Pardon me. Right where they are today. I I can't think of where. Oh, you mean the entrance, right yeah, at the entrance right. of mm -hmm. the, uh, with the connector coverage. between the two buildings. Oh yeah. The All of columns. these, the yeah, the columns. Oh yeah, uh, that's a good picture. Yeah. These, oh, very good. These, and they're not oh, yeah, rotting. Yeah, yeah. Well, are you gonna, they're are you not gonna exactly, leave the, the rails up really and coat them as well? Or? They're not that attractive yeah, now. Well, no. Actually, pressure treated too. They're pulled up with pressure treated. And they're in good shape. They're rot They're not rotted. Fresh paint in the spring, and the thing looks like a million dollars again every year. Just yeah. like we paint the lines in front of the library on the road. Show the picture. You know, just yep. you know it's a funny thing. There's rust down in the bottom. Yeah, but they're also ugly. But it's like a it's like a fence. They are. They're ugly. They're ugly. But the Call thing that I worry about is not that the old the old stuff will be rotted and look bad. It's the new stuff that looks terrible when it's uh, gotten. Um, cracked or blistered or uh, acid rain I see well maybe but I see that how they stick together you know they kind of clip Steve like uh, vinyl siding does and that's going to come off <laughs> no, it, no it, actually, it, doesn't. it doesn't because I've doesn't. used it I have it at my home oh, okay. and the only difference you can't tell no, that not it's when not it's new. glued no, um, not it's snapped but I believe it's also glued together mm -hmm. and and the the only difference if we could do the same thing in wood with the kick out like with a little apron piece but it does peel and it has to be painted um, I, I don't know that those four by fours that we currently have there would have to be replaced because this goes right over that um, it might just be the new bracket for whatever I don't know so, I don't know what so buy a power washer so you could wash them every six months that's fine too. It, well I have yeah, you don't have to do that I'm just saying if, yeah, you, you know the post that's the least my thought uh, on the whole thing if you you know, we're getting rid of the sidewalk down to Bevisick Lake Road after the back entrance right here. That would be fine with me. Um, and, but I don't, I don't see that as being a big deal. It's, you don't know that it's not wood. It's not like, I mean, vinyl siding, when you look at it close up, you can tell it's vinyl siding. This, you really can't tell. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> you know, Are you for it looks bad now. I mean, it doesn't look great. It, it doesn't it look great. Look much I think it would look a little better, and we're not going to spend... 500, I guess, on a on the real kind this, of color. This is not the thin PVC. This is like a quarter inch thick. If you look at the pictures, mm -hmm. this is fairly substantial. substantial. That's huge. Yeah. As a suggestion, could you price out the Azac board because that is a lot more significant in our architectural. You know what I? You know, versus the plastic PVC I see in municipal and government buildings, they use or go to a, a Walgreens. The white the white boarding. It's not a pla it's not a plastic. It's a fiberboard, cement fiberboard kind of like product, and it's just more authentic. Authentic, more substance. Uh, really green. Well, I have cement siding. It might be the siding that I've used. When they make it, they grain it, so mm -hmm. that it looks like it's yeah. it's nice. wood. It's not just a straight sheet. Yes, Eileen. Um. I um, I wonder what you think about the rest of it because this is about five hundred dollars of the project, and I I'm not saying that you shouldn't discuss it. I'm just saying that in the scheme of in the scheme of things, we should talk about you know whether or not you want the sidewalk or whether or not you want to spend the money or whether or not the handicapped accessibility of the ramps and that kind of thing. And um, I have a question. Oh, go ahead, you guys first. I'll wait. I was just going to throw out that um, I'm, I'm in favor of fixing the sidewalk because it isn't it's patched up the way it is now it continues to fall apart so I'm not opposed to the sidewalk I would like to see if we might be able to keep it within the budget at $75,000 uh, by stopping at Paul's door out here possibly and I, I don't know if pulling those numbers together I, I don't know if we could do that but that's kind of what I'm thinking about out loud at this point but your comment about the snow on the roof is really important. I, I feel like we're dressing up a sidewalk that's just going to get trashed uh, with ice and snow because it comes crashing down. Exactly. You shouldn't build a brand new pretty sidewalk below until you put a roof yeah. gate or up on the roof because it's well, just I don't think it's dollars and cents. It's like you're 
for me, the concern and about then you that is hurting an individual it coming into town Because you've got so much snow covered in ice, it comes down crashing on the very thing you're going to replace with something nicer. I just find that a little odd. Tom? The sidewalk has been an abomination for years. Okay? It's, a, it's an ankle breaker or a potential ankle breaker. And now that we've tried to seal it to cracks with black, whatever it was. Yeah, that was a good okay. idea. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And quite frankly, the section out here, okay, that's the best looking part of the sidewalk right now for whatever reason. Mainly because there's so much snow on it, they can't throw the rock salt on it to eat it up. The concrete. Okay. So, you know, I, you know, it's, the thing needs to be replaced. It's, I, every time I looked at it, I said, this is something that's, you know, the liability issue here is something else. Uh, and because they were, at the time that they built it the first time, they didn't put the granite curbing in. All right. You know, again, we were going back to your grouse about the, the new highway garage, and are we, are we building it on the cheap just to meet a, to meet a number? And you should have heard, you should have been in town when that thing got built. And they used shiplap siding for it. People went out of their minds over that whole thing. Over here. Yeah. yeah. On the addition. Okay. I read a letter. Yeah. They went out of their minds. It doesn't match anything in, in the center of town. Well, if you look real hard in the center of town, nothing matches. <laughs> anything. Okay. It's called eclectic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's polite. Okay. So anyway, it's you know it's you know it's 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 as you said it's it's personal preference it's personal aesthetics and those sorts of things but you know and yeah it would be great if that if that was safer for that kind of a well, then setup. I, I, I suggest you do just the back sidewalk, leave our ramps alone, and don't put a, a sidewalk leading to Babusik Lake Road, and you, you'll come under budget. I'd rather see that. I'd rather do do the <coughs> most important part of the, of the project, which is that back sidewalk. Which is the public. Which is the public, public access way f from the parking lots. I'd go with that. And then I don't think you'd be tight for money. Okay, John? I anticipated that. Ah. <laughs> what is that? Is this a bait and switch? She anticipated. <laughs> In comparison, this oh, is what she really give you what you want. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> I've been here too long. <laughs> she, well. She hasn't been here this long because she's catching on early. Yeah. Well, yeah, she's had this experience in other places, oh, no yeah. doubt. Oh, yeah. Go right ahead, Don. So I, I agree and I disagree. Uh, if we take from Paul's doorway down a Babusik away, that's 55 feet, it's $7,800. That's, that's as much as it will eliminate well, off of that away. budget. I just, just leave it be. That, and that's fine. Taking nothing. that away, yeah. de eliminating so that I section I, is $7,800. I already did this analysis. I would suggest leaving this section, one, yeah. because in order to get the tip down in, I had to come around that corner okay. grade-wise. There are many things in play for how this played yeah. out. Um, you've got a parking lot over here that I see people parking there and going into the town hall. Sure. So it's not just employees. So they need to be able to access this. Right now that sidewalk ends right there. Mm -hmm. And it would also give um, the employees entering a better entrance because what the sidewalk will do is be six inches higher than the grade. And then it will be one step in actually reconstructing this step out here, it's one step up and then into the building, one step up. So he'll have a nice landing, a five by five landing, a proper landing to be able to get in there instead of that little yeah. tiny piece that he's got right now. That's cost And when she more says he, that means the finance department. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> they, yeah, they but, but the other employees but the other employees in the the other employees in the town hall use that entrance at the yeah, especially in bad weather, okay? And um, <clears throat> there have been people who have gone out that step and have fallen down because it's not 
it's not wide enough. Trying to go out and fight the door and try and get down the step, carrying whatever they're carrying in and out of the building, okay? Um, you know, we had one towel employee go out there and, and wreck an ankle. And it was out for three or four weeks. Um, so, you know, that, you know, having a proper way to get in and out of there where you're not trying to, you know, juggle uh, your stuff on a, on a uh, you know, eight or 11 inch wide stairway um, makes a lot of sense. The second part of that was this walkway over here. Yeah. Now, that is there now. Right. And there's a retaining, um, you know, a structure there in order to be able to walk in directly into that building at this point. None of that's coming out. It's just the surface in this area. It would just be the surface just so that all the concrete, everything would be the same age and it would all look the same. Otherwise, you're going to have a break line up in here someplace right now, and this will be a one age, so that will be failing before you know it, and then, you know, the rest of it will look all nice. Not that you said the public doesn't generally use that side, but it, it's not, that's not a great expense. I did not cost that side out because it was only taking out the surface, the top of concrete of whatever is there now. It's not now. dismantling the whole thing. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I had a quick question about the stairs right by that Becky's entrance. This one? Yeah. Are those being replaced? No. Beside the stairs, it looks like the foundation has to be repaired because it's crumbling. It is, and, and we did not take that into consideration with this. Um, that's something that when we have the contractors out here to do the walkthrough, we'd ask Literally, them. a cement crumbling. Yeah. Anyone else notice that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the rebar is starting to show. Okay. It's not, the, it's not the first place on that foundation where that's happened. Right. So, so that's something that would have to be added as a result of, or examined anyway. Examined. <coughs> Jackie? Yes. Um, I did want to make a comment about the sidewalk, that walkway down to the existing sidewalk. That sidewalk does run along all the way, and then it, it runs along DW Highway, and the Town Center Committee has discussed, seriously discussing um, a, <coughs> a walkway down from the um, hill where the gazebo is, and there will be um, eventually, I hope, a sidewalk. The school likes the idea of a sidewalk on O'Gara, and we just got a grant for a sidewalk on Woodbury. I think that, <laughs> I think that your idea of sidewalks, if you forgive me, if you had a timer on a camera and took a camera every 20, sec 20 minutes or something, you will find that a lot of people use the sidewalk. And when I go down to visit my daughter in Melrose, there's sidewalks on both sides of the street everywhere. You might not meet another walker, but eventually over the course of a day, there'll be 25 or 50 people using the sidewalk, you know? Even though if you took a picture of any particular time, there might be one person. So that's, that's what I think, that I think that it is useful. The teachers walk at their breaks, and I notice, um, I notice uh, the kids, of course, will cut a call all the way across, and it's very convenient to have a nice walkway, besides which it's dangerous to walk down that. I have walked down that side of the parking lot. You take your life in your hands because of the cars coming around the curb. <laughs> is it look at Tom's going now okay so I'm not sure if we've come to a decision yet we've talked about different ideas the issue is do does she is there more money needed we have 75,000 allocated the new is 95 is that what yours estimate, estimate? um Actually, I've got about 90, almost 97. Okay. So even, yes, Paul? The way that we plan to bid this is in segments um, with, with the bid. And if, if the council so sees it, if we go out to bid, we can get the prices for, for certain things, such as the, um, the covering for the, the poles and then this section and that section and the granite curbing and, and we're breaking the, the project out that way. We know that the biggest need is to replace the cracks and uh, 
the breakage that's from basically the east wing, which is Eileen's office door, up through the center island because the center island does not meet ADA code because it's too long of a stretch. So we, we, we know those areas and we're going to, the way we have this plan to bid is that we can break it out and we can come up with this is this, this is this, this is this, and come up with pricing and then we can make a determination of how we want to proceed after if the council sees fit of, of doing it that way to see how much this project is and we, we could bring it back in a memo form. I mean, I don't see, I don't think there's any debate about the connection between the two buildings and that main walkway that comes down. There's no issue there. And I don't see any issue with replacing in front of both buildings, right? right. Uh, so that is not an issue as far as I can see. Uh, I don't think there's an issue going around the corner to, 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 your, to your door. That's not an issue. Nor is it an issue to go to, up to the ramp on the right with the town council. The main issues are beyond that. Is that my understanding that correctly? And I agree. I think the PVC covering is probably worth it. I do understand your point. If we were into true authenticity, we wouldn't have done half the things we've done in town hall. <laughs> so I think, it's you know, fair. if in it, fact It's we, not historic. It's not a, that, that breezeway isn't a historic part no. of the building. No, it isn't. Okay, so there's no, it doesn't, you know, for historic purposes, it doesn't it, matter. I mean, aesthetically, the covering is going to make it look a lot better than just those poles are. So could we get, we can get pricing on that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would like to see, go ahead with what I've just identified. I think that's approved. Is that a reasonable, what I've just described, the centerpiece up until around the corners and that's it? Yep. Yep. Not yeah. the ramp sidewalk, nor the replacing of the ramp by the town council. That's the debatables. Not the ramp sidewalk, not the park. The yeah. sidewalk the going down the and the ramp by the TC <coughs> entrance. Is that the debatable part? Yeah. Yes. Eileen? I, um, I'm not really sure why um, there's a lot of concern about the area going up into the council room because all she's going to do is just continue the appearance of the existing service. material, concrete material. Yeah. Uh, it's rather than break it up it's into, you know, a, a nice piece and then, and no, and no. I forget what you said. No, How much is this? A couple of seven thousand. You're just resurfacing. You're not really dismantling that. Yeah, You're taking out the concrete that's there. So the four inches of concrete or five inches of concrete that are there, and then replacing it with um, so reinforced concrete. Stop dead. Um, when you're doing the whole project, doesn't really make sense if it's if it's not structurally changing it to me. Um, and I didn't understand what you meant about the other. Well, everything else seems to be non-debatable. Okay. It's the sidewalk. Yeah. Well, it's the ramp, and whether we use the PVC. Oh. Those so are the debatable this, issues, right? This piece of sidewalk here. Right. And this ramp. Yeah. Over those here. are the debatable issues. Not I think, with due respect, I think the only debatable issue is do we want to give them 20 grand more? Well, that's the, that's I really, think we're trying that's, to nickel and that's, dime. That's the bottom line. They're, they're saying that they can't do it for the original price. They're here for 20 grand more. Are we in or are we out? Is it possible to be itemized? That's what says you want to do. That, okay, Tom? What did you say? Oh, we have some. <laughs> Words of wisdom from Kyle. Uh -oh. Some oh. support. I failed? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> yeah, just a couple of points to the, to the last question. Everything we bid out, we do by unit prices. So if, we, if the contractor does it, they get paid for it. If we cut a project back, they don't get paid for it. So that's pretty simple. Um, one area, the, one other area, the reason I came up, that we could find some cost savings, it would, it's an aesthetic issue. But the two areas around the, the parking, the, the sprinkler head areas where we were proposing oh. to put granite curb, we could put bituminous curb there. Wouldn't be as attractive. You'd have granite on one side, bituminous on another. It is cheaper. Um, what is bituminous? Bituminous asphalt, asphalt, asphalt curb, sorry. Thank you. Sorry. 
Well, we required the court, the state, to put granite curbing. Correct. So I, I'd rather, if we're going to be doing the work there, for me, I'm, I'll, I think I'm all in, although I understand the... I agree uh, with that, too, though, about the granite curbing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that constraint on the plows coming around that corner and, and having granite on one side and having the, the uh, asphalt on the other, it just, you know, within two years, it'll be chopped to hell. Who would believe we were spending an hour talking? <laughs> oh, I would. Well, the rest of it, Jackie. The town hall is something that uh, newcomers or people thinking about moving to town uh, generally encounter. They're going to register their car or something. And it's all these little details all together that they see. And they don't see the individual item, the poster, the um, split rail fence, or whatever we have there. But uh, they do take in the whole thing, and they might not know why they say, oh, that's such a nice little town hall, the town must be nice, or, or not. We, have to, we should be aware <coughs> of that. And um, I think a granite curb is safer and, of course, better looking. And I think um, the whole thing, we are only going to do this, I think, once in our <laughs> time here, and I think we should do the whole thing. So what you're suggesting is you approve the extension of the money to nine. Yes. That's what I, I'll move that. Yes. I move that we authorize. Uh, We're um, making a motion here, guys. An additional $20,000 on the budget at 75000 I don't know. Um, may I just suggest that we, um, you allow us to go out to bid in a, from a unit pricing type okay. of yep. thing and see what better. we end up with Perfect. and what we can afford and if you you know if it if it um, drastically alters or changes something that you don't want to do then we can come back for the money How's that? ask you for the money okay I'd rather do it that way Agreed. sounds good Is that okay yep. everyone's okay. reasonable Thanks. with that yeah. excellent solution My goodness, poor John, you have to be for something else here, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, public hearing. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks. Submitted by Planning and Zoning Administrator Julian Harris, Town Council will hold a public hearing to accept and authorize the expenditure of up to $12,244 of the grant from New Hampshire DES uh, Department of Environmental Services for milfoil control via diver assisted suction harvesting dash. Go ahead, Paul. This has been postponed until I believe March 9th <coughs> due oh. to scheduling conflicts and uh, posting requirements due to the postponements of the snowstorms. Okay, so this has been postponed to March 9th. Okay. We need, Let's we need to do that officially or? Or did you somehow officially do that already? In talking with legal counsel, they told us it's best if we go back out and re-advertise this public hearing for March 9th to have it again. So we're just going to re-advertise it and put it on the March 9th meeting. And that's was because of the postponement. Does that answer your okay. question? Yeah, I guess. I, mean, I, I would have thought we'd have to at least have a motion to move it to another meeting, but, but, it, but maybe not. It's a advertised public hearing. So. If anybody's here for it, sorry. Right? Standing room only. <laughs> okay. Uh, legislative updates from state reps. Not seeing none. Town manager's report. Uh, the Merrimack Police Department wants to remind everyone there is no parking on the roadways during the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. and during snow emergencies. Vehicles found to be impeding snow removal may be towed at the owner's expense. Please contact Merrimack Police Department if you have any questions. Vehicles are prohibited from driving on road roadways with vehicles. Ve with um, vehicles are prohibited from driving on roadways covered in snow and with the vehicles covered in snow and ice. <laughs> Operators can be fined $250 for the first offense, 
Plus, it could be extremely hazardous, so please do the right thing and remove all the snow and ice from your vehicles. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. There's no consent agenda. Old business, EPA Stormwater 217, New Hampshire Small MS4 General Permit update. There, there they are back again. Don and Kyle. On January 19, 2017, the EPA released the final version of the MS4 permit. The meeting is to provide the town council with an update as to the implications and impacts of the new permit of the town. Go for it. This is basically just a, tonight will be an informational, just to bring you up to speed with what has happened. Um, in a few weeks, we'll be coming in and having more detailed discussions. But food for thought. And as you know. Good food or bad food? Liver, huh? <laughs> so two days before the president took over, the new president, the EPA put Apparently. this out that they have been saying would be coming since 2013. It's been a, they all of a sudden decided. Yeah, yeah okay. all of a sudden decided. So this is the 17 permit that will go into effect um, July 1st, 2018. 18. We have a little under 18 months. Um, then there's a whole series, and I didn't bring those charts, although Eileen did see them. It's a big fold-out board with everything that we have to do to be able to comply. Um, little history. This is, came about from the Clean Water Act back in 72. And if you remember way back, they started with sewage treatment plants. They started with industrial. They started with the major cities and all of the runoff. So as time has gone on from 72, they have slowly been cleaning the waters, which we desperately need, and everybody wants clean water. There's no doubt. The difference between this permit and the permits back in the 70s and 80s when they were requiring separate stormwater and sewage treatment, they had federal monies available for the towns to be able to offset the costs of putting in the sewage treatment plants and all of the piping. Today, there, are, there is no federal monies available. So it's all coming from the taxpayers. You have to understand that part of this. Um, so whatever costs, this is going to cost us, it's going to come from us. Exactly. Um, there, there are a few little grants here and there. <laughs> they are nothing compared to what we're going to be needing. Madam Chair, two words. Unfunded mandate. So, you know, there's, there's no doubt. We, we want to have clean water. This permit is very similar to one that came out in Massachusetts last year. I believe it was July of last year. And this book has 69 pages of permit and another 200 pages in appendices. So we're dealing with 260, 70 pages worth of regulation here. For example, Maine, who regulates themselves, they don't fall under the EPA, they have 28 pages. But they're still achieving the same goals, just in a different way. Because they still have to follow all of the federal laws under Clean the Clean Water. Water Act. There's no getting away from that. They have increased, in this book they have increased you're, it's our duty to comply and to mitigate. If we don't, there are criminal penalties that range from $2,500 to $50,000 a day for noncompliance. Civil penalties are up to $2 million. It's in the book. I, oh, no, I can't. Like, I, I, said, <laughs> I said it before. Let the federal government come in and force us to write checks. Yeah, unfunded mandate. You could take that book and burn it. I could care less about it. 
Do you know the right. criminal path? It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's almost, it's, all, it's just so, they, yeah. it's, just, it's just the gross nature of, of, of tyranny to, to think that the federal government's coming in bullying us with this book. And it's, all the I children find it, have I just find it clean offensive. But, but, I find it totally but, offensive. But, but Dan, what Don, what Don hasn't alluded to, which you know I, I've been privy to the conversation, is that there were numerous and numerous and numerous of comments provided by all of the impacted municipalities. And do you think they incorporated any of those comments into that particular permit? Of course not. I mean, that's the insult. That's another 300-page book, which I didn't even bring up. I haven't even touched, I, I've looked at that, some of the comments, um, but I haven't even got into that. But that's another whole story. That's a whole other EPA story. is, says, we shall come into your community, we shall inspect, we shall have the right. You can't stop us. We have to provide them with the proper operations and maintenance, monitoring and records, and requiring of reports. If we have any noncompliance within 24 hours, we have to re report all of this. We have to still do the endangered species and the historic structures, which is the same as before. Now, let me back up a little bit because I'm getting a little confused. If I'm confused, I'm sure a lot of people are. <laughs> so this has to do with stormwater. That's correct. And presently, we have some stormwater, but not enough. Is that what I'm hearing? Stormwater. I mean, stormwater drains. drains, drainage. The bottom line is we're going to be mandated to build more stormwater drainage? We are going to be mandated to clean up the waters that the enter the Merrimack, <coughs> the Sauhegan, Babusik Brook. Um, I've got a whole list of... Okay, so any time there's drainage going into there, Correct. we have to be able to identify it and remediate it. If it has got what their bacterias, phosphorus, any metals, an any, anything that's causing an impact. Rain. Yeah, rain. It, exactly. Well, <clears throat> okay. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. Finley, go. Oh, I've done, I can wait till Don's done if you'd like. Go ahead, because I'm just trying to get a, I, I'm an overall view. I'm trying to Go step you through this without, because it is complicated. And it, I have spent the last couple of weeks trying to get my head around this any minute I had. So and this it's, is, it's, when would the, never mind, I'll wait. Go for it. It is going to affect the public outreach and education. Anybody have a dog? You're going to be mandated to pick up the dog waste. Phosphorus, you lawns, fertilizer, we're going to have to not add the phosphorus into the fertilizers. Um, washing your cars. Done. We're also going to be, we, the, the town is going to be responsible to make sure that people aren't using phosphorus on their lawns. That's correct. Okay. We have to so do we're going public to have phosphorus outreach. police. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's correct. <laughs> so, any automotive work, swimming pool water, maintenance of septic systems, all of this falls on the homeowners. Um, businesses and industry, salt, de-icing, storage of salt, uh, storage of any materials, open dumpsters, parking lots, plowing, you name it. They're going to be, we're going to have to have more restrictions. Uh, more public involvement and participation. New Hampshire has very nicely put out one of these little books for the Homeowner's Guide to Stormwater. And quite honestly, it's a very good book. I've used it since it's come out for residential in particular because they don't have the maintenance contracts. They don't have the people and they don't know how to take care of some of these systems. So this would be some of the public outreach that we would need to do would be to, you can do simple things to your home to be able to mitigate the stormwater. We're going to have to teach the people, so this is part of this. Um, illicit discharge detection and elimination, IDDE. What this means is that we will start from the rivers, from the brooks, wherever we have a known pollutant of any sort, and we will work back up through the catch basin systems, whatever it is, to find out where the discharge where the is coming from. <clears throat> Testing, money, time, people. 
Um, we have construction stormwater control runoffs. Um, we do that today. I quite often go out on a subdivision. If I see even the smallest bit going out from underneath the silt fence, the barriers of any kind, I draw our attention to it immediately. I walk those sites during construction time every week because the smallest amount can lead to a bigger outfall. And um, I've come back a couple times and kind of like, calm down, calm down. <laughs> but they need to fix it while it's good because we don't want it going into Baboosic Brook. We don't want it going into the Sauhegan. We'll be in trouble if that happens. So we need to, you know, strengthen those. Um, Post-construction management. Anybody, anytime anybody puts one of these systems in, a detention basin, a swale, a grass swale, um, filters of any sort, they have to be maintained. So we have to have a maintenance program or they will, all of the business owners or whoever's system it is, will need to have a maintenance program and it has to be reviewed. Town, municipal, good housekeeping, pollution prevention, and system mapping. That is your street sweeping, your catch basin. <clears throat> Those are non-structurals. And I told Kyle a couple weeks ago, everything we do from now on <coughs> will have to be measurable. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I said, that's what this book says. This book says we shall measure everything we do and we have to be accountable for everything we do. I mean, we've done a very good job since 2003, which is when our original came, under, came into being under this <coughs> program. We've been working hard, but we've been working at our pace to be able to comply. And I believe our waters have been improving. We spent 50, 60, 70 years, it used to be the engineer said the solution to pollution is dilution. That's what it, the old ant adage used to be. You can't do that today. And we shouldn't do that because we want clean waters. But we need to pick up, we need to clean up what has been done in the past. And it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in five years, 10 years, or 15. It's going to take more time and being persistent through the time, especially where it's no help is coming from the federal government. We're going to have to do it ourselves, and we're going to have to do it, you know, on our schedule when we can. And, you know, we have been doing things. Um, do there is a you, do they give you a timeline schedule? Yes. Ah, which of is, course. Which is the problem, probably. Yes. Starting in six years, if we have not started into a program and been accountable, then we have to start going into structural best management practices. And there are different things such as removing impervious surfaces, taking away pavement, making it porous pavement, uh, infiltration basins, trenches, uh, surface drains. Eileen, did you, do you want to interject something? I'm sorry. I, let, me just, let me just give the framework first and then you can continue. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you or anything. Um, but basically what it comes down to is this new permit is going to cost the town millions of <coughs> dollars in terms of new employees for monitoring and also <coughs> for going to um, <coughs> review everything. So it's going to cost us millions of dollars. Um, and uh, the responsibilities are broad and the, these permits, um, Ma uh, Massachusetts, uh, is mirrors um, what the one that they, they're doing for New Hampshire, and they're <clears throat> the most stringent uh, MS4 permits in the country. Um, the other thing, so there's two items. There's number one is it's going to cost millions of dollars. Um, they expect us to do it really quickly. Um, and number two is that um, most they're relying on old data from the state. So the DES the has um, the DES has put together information about particular 
um, water bodies and different kinds of things. It's old dated information. It's often done, it has been done by interns that really don't have the expertise to be doing it and now this is the gospel um, that we have to comply with. If there's no phosphorus anymore, it doesn't matter. We still have to remove the phosphorus or we have to attempt to remove phosphorus that doesn't exist because it was identified by the state as having a <coughs> precursor for this phosphorus. That's how absurd it is. So, um, so you ha have this way over regulation. And then secondly, the, um, and Don can um, address this more um, uh, eloquently than I, but um, EPA um, is generally not the, the states normally take over this responsibility and the EPA blesses it and I'm not sure what that's called. In, in, um, we're the, we're of only, we're only um, one of two states in the nation who don't have, um, who has the EPA coming in and telling the us what EPA. to do, the federal EPA. Normally the is four. 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 Sorry. Four okay, you go. You you explain that, please. Actually, if I, if, if I, I I this is just the more I'm hearing this, the angrier I'm getting. It's once again unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats coming up with the most insane stuff. We spent money on an attorney with a group of communities, and we tried to point out how they're taking old, twenty-year-old information and using that data to come up with these rules and regulations. Did they even hear that from us? Did they do anything about that? They and actually have been. Pardon me? They, they have started. Um, Kyle and I and Mr. Boyd went up to the State House last week for a Senate bill that is being proposed. Uh, one of them deals with the um, old data. And New Hampshire DES was at this hearing and they stated that in March they will be bringing out the 2014 um, numbers for us to look at and then by the end of June they will be bringing out the 2016. They are supposed to be doing this every two years and they haven't been. Okay, I guess if, if, I, if I might, I just want to go through a couple things. Get back to this one topic if you don't mind. Do you I mind? Don't mind. Um, I just, you don't. You I don't mind. But anyway, um, I just want to get back to this four states, two states, and, and <clears throat> how we're different from them. If we could just get back to that one because it's an important one, and then okay. anything else can be obviously discussed. And For sure. New England, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire are the only two that are underneath the EPA. All of the other New England states have their own. Um, State-funded, state state <clears throat> because they opted out for it. Massachusetts is now going down that route. <clears throat> the second part of this legislation, which we went up to last week, the first part was the, the list, the 303D list. The second part of that was to have New Hampshire DES take over this permit and to be able to make it <coughs> so it fit New Hampshire. So. And there were four total in the country, New Mexico and I don't know. I don't a lot of storm in New Mexico. <laughs> in, um, in line with that, uh, we do encourage you to talk to your state reps and state well, senators to, um, to, well, no, to, we to support that, that bill. Uh, like, like Don said, we went up last week and spoke to the bill. Senator Sanborn out of Bedford is, is promoting it. And um, what it would do is it would force e uh, DES to request delegated authority from EPA. There's still many steps that would have to happen before it happened. And EPA ultimately has to give the authority to the state. Um, but, but that's how it would happen. And of course, DES would need to um, fund, the, the state would need to fund DES to take over that responsibility. Uh, but in our opinion, that would clearly be better than, than what we've been given. So, and DES right. was willing to take that over. They s stated at the hearing they last week that they were willing to do that, but their concern is the funding and what it would take to right. do that. Go ahead, Finley. All right, it, it, see, it's, 
I suspect in the first place they didn't take it because it would be an unfunded mandate, as uh, Bill had suggested earlier. Um, it's, I, we have to have our legislative delegation here. They have to react in every way possible to protect this because this is insane. I, uh, I, I thought, you know, Maine was just one of the lucky ones, but apparently there's a bunch, you know, everybody else but a few of us. So uh, um, it, you're telling me we're going to have to come up with new local regulations in order to accommodate uh, all these checking to make sure you're cleaning up your dog poop and everything else. It, it's... Um, I'm annoyed by it. I'm not doing it. It's, I, a, it's an extension of what we did under the last permit. So we're still under the 2003 five-year permit uh, 14 years later. Sure. And you re recall the stormwater standards that you guys passed a number of years ago now that had the construction right. and the post-construction standards. That was all a result of the, the current permit that we're working under. This takes everything another step further. Well, One I, step. Giant Part two. I'd like I'd like us to have a letter written to our congressional <clears throat> delegation and uh, or, uh, have our state reps tell us what they're going to do to protect our town and other communities should do the same thing. Uh, I would that's agree. where I am. Now this is every community within the state. No, no there's no. only 61, no, 61 communities in the state. There's only what? 61. 61. So it's all from south of Concord and, and not Concord. Not Concord. Why? We, we asked that question in our comments and weren't given an answer. Okay. But yet oh, we need that answer when they come here. Um, it, it is. It is. So but yet the, town, the town towns. of Wilton with 3,600 is being pulled in under this <coughs> permit for the first time. 3,600 people. But because we have 1,012 people within a one-mile radius, they have pulled us in. But the best is line borough. They actually got it opted out. They opted out. They have been opted out. Lineborough was the best. Yeah, exactly. That was um, the best. But they're coming after the little communities, but yet they're not doing the town, city of Concord. So anyway, this that's permit was designed for the Boston's, the New York City's, the Los Angeles's, and the Chicago's of the world, based on the volume of storm water that gets produced in those communities, and obviously, therefore, they have the funding and the capacity to, to pay for. It. Even not, excuse me. Even they don't. Even they and don't even they don't. I agree. I agree. But the reality is, you named they're in receivership practically. They're all broke. Well, I'm just saying. But the, the reality of it is that they, they created they created a permit with large cities in mind and, and have taken the mentality and have applied it, applied it to our community. <coughs> where we can't afford it. Tom, you had comments, and then Jackie. <laughs> My, my only comment was to ask, and, and you kind of alluded to it, as to what's the, what's the downside? Why would the state not do that? And I'm, I'm assuming the state would not do it because the state doesn't have any money to pay for DES to take over that responsibility. Right, it's purely a funding uh, mechanism. Okay, so I mean, we, can, we can have our representatives come in and we can beat on them and say go do something, but if they don't have the funding to do it, we, you know, we all have to come up with the right funding, whether we do it inside the town or whether we do it at the state level. And I have no problem with doing it at the state level. I mean, I support that. But I think we need to be open-minded about it and realize there is a cost factor in the, and getting the state to do anything at this point is difficult at best. Right. And it will take a couple of years. This isn't going to happen overnight. So. Jackie, then Bill. I'm curious how the other states opted out. Is this, um, does this go back quite a way? And should, could we have at that mm -hmm. time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. If we had the money. When was it? Mm -hmm. my, my, my assumption is it was a business decision that the state made many years ago that when <clears throat> when this program came around, DES said, oh, great, EPA is going to run it? Great. We don't we have to pay for it. Anything. Mm -hmm. Not knowing the ramifications. Right. Yeah. Not believing that it could get so out of hand. Well, oh, this is, this is insanity. Yes. This is... This is you talk about inside the beltway thinking, this is it. Okay. Because whoever put this together, no concept of reality at all. None. Zero. And didn't care about it either. No. No. Well, the, no. And all they're trying to do is we're going to make an example out of these guys. And raced it before the election. Uh, but you haven't heard the best yet. <laughs> we can well, hardly can, wait. Do you, want to, do you want to hear the best or do you want to make a comment? No, no. I, I can wait. Let's I can hear wait. the best. Well, is this the icing on the cake? Is this about the this development? Is, this is kind of the icing on the cake. This is section 2.1.1 and 
1.2 in this book. In fact, if anybody would like this book, just ask Eileen. I can make, I'll have it made up for anybody that so desires this book. Anyway, um, any new development or redevelopment with an increase in drainage will be subject to additional state and federal anti-degradation regulations. In 30 whatever years I've spent in being an engineer and doing this type of work, I have never done an anti-degradation permit, ever. I do understand in doing a little bit of research about this in the last couple of weeks, in 2009 the state DES incorporated some of the anti-degradation every time you went to do an alteration of terrain permit, an AOT. Um, about 2009 the <coughs> permit um, just exploded. It went from this fairly complex thing to an immensely complex permit. Um, you know, sometimes some of the subdivisions, you've got like a three inch binder just to, for the application. I mean, it's that intense. And I didn't realize at the time until this has come up, but part of that is to do with anti degradation. And I know there are more regulations beyond that. And I also know that the AOT is being updated now. So what's going to happen? Is there going to be more anti-degradation incorporated within that? You know, I don't know. I don't know about the federal anti-degradation. I've never had a project that large to, to have to go through that. But it's a cost. It's a and, cost and the big takeaway from that is that the work that the planning board does, local development approval, may have to be approved at state and federal levels as well. So it takes control out of the local authority to uh, higher powers. And the last pit bit of that was um, there will be no new or increased discharges to impaired waters. This will pro prohibit future development anywhere within the town without more stringent state and federal permitting. So like anything you do, any redevelopment, you want to change your building from one to another, you've, you're going to have to be looking at the outside for your storm water. And you've got to prove that you're not going <clears> to... <throat> you have to prove The burden that. of proof is on the person redeveloping right. to say, I'm not going to increase capacity of discharge into the, into the storm water. So we'll definitely... That's currently in place. I understand that, but... I mean, to, to, to that degree. I mean, uh, the, the planning board still requires you to prove that you're not going to increase based but, on the town's... But that's you, current. Tom. That's the town of Merrimack. It's, I understand. And that's, that's the point. But I don't, so I don't know. I mean, I hear the words. I don't know how much change there's actually going to be. We're currently requiring people to prove that they don't, up to the 25 or the 50 year storm, they're not going to increase discharge um, downstream. And this is going to do worse than that, I presume, somehow. But I assume I have not ever seen but we don't anti degradation. The, mean, the bottom line is I was asked for costs. It's going to take more personnel. It's going to take somebody at least full time on this, if not two people. It's going to cost um, either that or contractor or somebody that does this um, testing. The testing is going to be a big thing. And then putting all of the different plans together. Um, and then when we get six years out and we have to actually start constructing these structures to help mitigate the phosphorus and the nitrogen and um, any metals or anything we have uh, that will increase cost to millions. So. But you're leaving out a key point. 76% of phosphorus, which we talked about back in 2012, this was before it was back in 2012, that phosphorus is very difficult to clean. That you could, it's like, it's almost like milk water. You can keep, you can keep pulling it and keep pulling and keep pulling and you're never going to get rid of the darn stuff. People keep selling it and selling it. That's exactly correct. The, um, the new permit does call for, like Horseshoe Pond, having a 76% reduction in phosphorus. Now phosphorus, according to this book, and we had this discussion this afternoon, you can do street sweeping. You can do it twice a year, once a month or weekly, and whether that's in just the certain areas, I don't know, I haven't read to that in depth in here. But everything we do has to be measurable, so we have to, we can account for those, and we'll actually have to get, go through formulas, there's a, 
all these appendices have calculations that have to be run through. If you want to put fertilizer out on the ball fields and it's next to you know, the lakes or brooks or the rivers, we'll be doing a calculation to figure out how much you're allowed to put out there. We can't put it out without that. We've got an awful lot of water in this town. There isn't any place. Correct. Well, and that's what you see over there. <coughs> right is all of the red water. are the impaireds. And the EPA, the, the one on the left, that all the area that's in red, that's under the EPA. That falls underneath this book. It's almost the whole town. Well, my system's doing Yeah, just about. We have, um, I do have a list. Babusik Lake, Bowers Pond has iron, Holtz Pond, Babusik Brook, unnamed brook from York Pond to Sohegan River, Natticook Lake, Merrimack River, Sohegan River, Penichuk Brook, Witches Brook, Babusik Lake, and Horseshoe Pond or Phosphorus. And under the 2014 look, um, listing, which I took a glance at because they did post it the other day. Uh, there's mercury coming in from somewhere. You know, part of me, I mean, we need to find out where that mercury is coming. Exactly. I think the bottom line is it should be done. It's just the. It's the new light bulbs. It's the response. At the how do you do it, little <clears throat> town? Bill. Right. Thank you. There's just a couple points I, I'd, I'd like to make. Number one, um, the House has a companion bill, 342, sponsored by Representative Gold from Bedford, <clears throat> that wants to wants to do a study, ten member ten member commission to do a study on what's the appropriate approach to to handle this. Uh, in the Senate, uh, it, in the hearing with the Senate, Senator Bradley, who was the vice chair of the committee, had indicated that more than likely going to come out of the committee and be favorable, and once it's brought to the Senate, more than likely it's going to get sent to finance, which for all the insiders up in Concord, when something goes to finance, it basically is dead. dead. Am I right? So you, you Because there is no finance. Correct. So you're looking at, at, you're looking at that particular piece. There was a report. Yeah. There was a report in Politico that talked about an executive order by President Trump that basically put a moratorium on these types of, of permits. Now, whether it is related to this permit or whether this per permit is impacted by this executive order or not, is, it's not clear. So there's, there potentially is a potential a political solution to this based on what the new um, EPA administrator does with some of the things that have been promulgated over the last over the last couple of months that have that have that are impacting our particular our particular state. Um, the last piece that I would point out in relation to Horseshoe Pond, kind of, and I'm trying I'm actually being restrained because this really ticks me off. This whole thing ticks me off. But in Bedford. Bedford has a similar problem where they've got a pond. The pond's about 10 acres. They have to remediate that pond. In order for them to remediate that pond, they got to go buy a piece of property for a staging area in order for them to be able to remediate that pond. In my conversations with Kyle and Don, it's it because there's no town property down around Horseshoe Pond. We literally would have to go to somebody's property and say, can we buy a piece of your property to set up a staging area in order for us to clean Horseshoe Pond? And I, I'm sorry? Big piece, and and and, outs and outside of that, I mean, we, you know, we we thought about the the the, the potentially the the Melton's property, but I mean that, but even still, you know, there's nothing down there. We literally, if we can't get an owner to sell us their property, we're talking about that dreaded word that begins with an E and ends in domain on the end. I mean, that's what potentially this town could be looking at just to comply with this particular permit. So. I wouldn't know. Of course not. I wouldn't. I, I would never. I would. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting. I understand, but I'm that's just trying. I'm just trying to make the point. I'm just trying to make the point. So you're basically here just giving us a heads up that there'll be more information. But in the meantime, we should probably <clears throat> request our legislators 
to come before us and help us understand Finley? Is that what you're? Ma Madam Chair, I would I would move that the t town council outreach to Representative Chris Christensen. I know he sits. He's the chairman of the Resources, Recreation, and Development Committee, and I want to. S I w I'm not sure if this bill is going to impact, but I would ha I would I would ask either him or the majority leader of the house Dick Kentz and the rest of the delegation to provide us with uh, an analysis of house bill 342 and senate bill 121 and what do and, and be able to provide us with feedback as to how we should be preparing for this particular issue yes Dan I'm going to prepare uh, Ms. what I prepare that we do with this issue is that it's a complete waste of time going to the state reps what this and to put it this in medical terms that book represents a sociopath and if you look at a sociopath who is like crazy lunacy a professional PhD doctor would tell you to just run and ignore and don't associate yourself with a sociopath this is what has been presented to us so if you want to play ball you're playing ball with a lunatic Nothing is ever going to go well with this. We're never going to raise millions of dollars. We're not going to have the town bond money to put anything this in place. This book is from the devil himself. It is just, it is. And or, we're all laughing at it. No, we know the lunacy the of the federal government and the overreach and the unfunded <clears throat> mandate and every crazy thing that we've already said. Concord's not in it. I mean, we could go on and on. We could go on with a thousand crazy things. And when you deal with someone, a truly sociopathic person in life, you, you're to run. You're not to associate with them. You're to shun them, ignore them, get out of their way. And that's exactly what that book represents. Do not cooperate on any or, level. Just keep pretending it doesn't even exist until the day comes where the federal government will come into our treasury and force us to do the things that that crazy book says. Thank you. The other option, Madam Chair, is just sit back and... See how see how it pans out. There's a, the, 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 there's I, I a new guess, game in see, town I down have in a DC. At least we have to get educated, yeah. and that's what the legislature. To me, that's what. <coughs> where where do we stand? What input are we hearing from our legislators? I don't think there's any harm in that. I don't think that's giving permission to the EPA or giving them a good job. It's a we're trying to get educated related to what the status is now. And if the legislators are going, uh, well, then maybe we should go. Uh. So I think maybe you should sleep on it, like I said. We have a motion digested. on the floor. I mean, I'm happy to then, withdraw. I'm happy then, to withdraw. There's nothing to sleep on. Exactly. We've known this for years. No, it's I been know. coming. This isn't like, a, you know, all of a sudden we're all but going, oh, really? No, we've, it's the, we know it's been coming for years. I guess I would like to also come back in a few weeks or whenever. Mm -hmm. As yeah. you get more information. Yeah. It, yeah. Yes, Jackie. Yeah. I do have a comment. I don't think there's anybody in this room or this town that doesn't care about clean water. Right. And um, right. the, the problem, obviously, here is that it, it's just so overwhelming. The dictates are uh, people will voluntarily clean up, like on Babusik Lake, we're really zealous about uh, dog waste and phosphorus and all that stuff, and it pays off. I guess my point is that we really have to be educated and find out it is absurd that it would come to us in such a fashion. You're beautifully educated, both of you, and uh, that you have a struggle uh, learning it. It's ridiculous. It just proves it. But I do think that there's a compliance that probably will have to be done. And I hope that the, the regulations will come in much more understandable ways and make much more sense to everyone. Yeah, I, I don't want to have to, put, I'm not going to be putting too much more in, but I, I think that for me the shock is that when we had these, this attorney firm, you know, represent us with a group of towns, I really thought things would come back in a more moderate fashion, and they apparently haven't because you're still talking millions, and so I, I was expecting a few hundred thousand dollars a year would be something that I, that I wouldn't even really be interested in, but I would have thought that that would have been at least more understandable. The, the, the thing is, family, the fact that they that the EPA ignored what the communities yeah. had to say about the is it should tell you. Well, the original data. Yeah. That's that, that should Good. tell you. Something so simple. So we there was no motion. there was no second of my, there was no there second was no of my second motion. Second. I can I can withdraw it because, I'm you know. 
If, no, if, I, unless someone's I, going to second I'd, it. I'd like to, I mean, I would like our representatives to really make sure that we're fully informed. I agree with Dan. I'm not, they're not going to twist my arm. I'm and sorry. I agree with Dan I, as well. I just, things. but I think that we should. People uh, need to know how big the, the head of this monster is. It's not so much our education, although that's true, but the public has to be educated. Exactly. Well. So we are, again, not abdicating our responsibility, but at the same time, we have to be able to have due process, that at least we're getting the information. What we do about it is a whole different story. Have any of the communities had any correspondence with our congressional delegation as well? Well, that's what we need to that, ask them. That, that, that's the butte, no. The, 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 well, the congressional delegation has been silent the, on the matter. See, the public has to be aware of it. Right. We have to make sure that our legislators know that we're on them too. Okay, did we have a second? There's Tom no second in my motion. Finley seconded it. I'm not going to withdraw if I got a second. Well, you have a second in Finley. Okay. Does everyone understand what the motion is? Wait a minute. Uh, no. Repeat. I'll, I'll jump. What, Eileen? I can read what I wrote. Go ahead, see what you've got. Let me, Paul, let me start. I'll, I'll start over, Paul. Madam Chair, I move, I move that the town manager reach out to the Merrimack State Legislative Delegation, whether it be Senate, Senator Daniels, Majority Leader Hench, or whomever, to report back to the council at a date certain to discuss to us the ramifications of House Bill 342 or Senate Bill 121. And any other ancillary piece of legislation that impacts the regulation of the MS4 stormwater permit that would allow us to provide education to the members of the council and the community. It's, it's, you can get it on the video. Will you second that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, so you're just specifying a couple of delegates. I want our whole delegation. Well, that's what I. Well, I mentioned Senator well, Daniels yeah. and Majority Lynch, Majority Leader Hinch. By name only because they're significant people. With I did say the entire okay. uh, state legislative delegation. delegation. Okay. Any other discussion before we vote? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Six yes, one opposed. That was the end Okay. So much oxygen <laughs> You mean more than the previous discussion? It's another boondoggle for the lawyers. So we'll lawyers. be getting more information. Thank you. Thank In you. the meantime, we are going to try to get some information from our delegation. Okay, if it's okay with the committee, the tech council, I'd like to move without objection. I'd like to have Pat Murphy. You willing to come up a little earlier? She's been hanging around. Request for support letter for federal public transportation planning and research grant submitted by Welfare Administrator Pat Murphy to request a letter of support from the Town Council for the uh, National Regional Planning Commission to apply for an opportunity of federal planning and research grant. And I'll let you go ahead and explain okay. what that is. Good evening. Um, as you're probably wondering, why is the Welfare Director here asking for <laughs> a um, request for a um, support letter for something to do with transportation. That's, yeah, that is so. So the reason um, I am involved in this is back in 2007, it was required that, that we be part of a local coordinated transportation plan for the greater Nashua region. So at the time, the town manager um, appointed me to this committee or council because of the fact that I had, you know, been involved in, in fielding a lot of calls for transportation issues. So this is why I originally was on this council and why I became involved in this transportation um, issues. So this planning grant is, is just that, it's planning and research. And it, that's all, it's, but the, the thing that it's really taking forward is part of a, the local coordinated plan that was put together originally in 2008 and it was just updated in 2016 and this um, plan looks at the coordinating efforts of the whole Nashua region and how we can best 
do public transportation in a way that it coordinates it around the region as opposed to everybody trying to do their own thing. So the, the coordinating plan basically, just to give a summary from Merrimack, it found that based on Merrimack, we have a very densely populated area along the Daniel Webster Highway, especially in the northern part of that, which actually houses most people that are, it's our highest dense area of people who are disabled, um, who have the lowest incomes in the area, who have the lowest transportation of vehicles, um, and people who are elderly. We have several elderly developments on, on that area. So this was identified in the plan long ago that would be an area that would they'd be looking at for a possible public trans, like a, um, a normal public transit um, going through. So now this proposal that we're looking at and we're asking for support of is just to look at what the feasibility would be and what would be the cost analysis of doing uh, this kind of possible transportation system where we'd have a regular transit that would go up in this area. And, um, and this is what this um, request is for, is just really your support in this grant that the National Regional Planning um, Commission is, um, they have to be the lead people to do this grant and basically it's just our support in this looking into this feasibility. Questions? Anyone? What's a pleasure? Madam Chair, I move that the Town Council write a letter of support to the National Regional Planning Commission to apply for an opportunity of a Federal Planning and Research Grant 5305E that would look at the feasibility and cost analyses of expanding public transit on Route 3 through Merrimack. Second. Second. Motion made by Bill Boyd, seconded by Tom Mahan. Any other discussion, questions for Pat? No? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we have six, four, one opposed. That would be Finley Rothhouse. And the motion passes. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Pat, thank you. It's right here, isn't it? Oh, which I have to sign. Huh? It's right here. Yeah, so I didn't see that. Butler. I think, um, yeah, we don't have it. Yeah. I have it. Okay. I have it because I have to sign it. See, I would have liked to have read that. Would you, um, it's okay. No biggie. No biggie. It's okay, Pat. No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, Town Council is pleased to provide a letter of support for the National Regional Planning Commission application for statewide transportation planning and research funding. NRPC is partnering in the National Transit System to conduct public outreach efforts regarding proposed transit routes that would expand transit service along New Hampshire 101A between Nashua and Milford, Continental Boulevard between Nashua and Merrimack, and along Daniel Webster uh, and H3 between Nashua and Merrimack. The purpose of the outreach effort is to gauge public interest and support for the various transit expansion scenarios. You won't know? I'm reading it for you, Bill. <laughs> well, I was doing a service for you because you had. For the community as well. I understand. The town of Merrimack currently contracts with the Nashua Transit System for limited demand response service and is a member of the National Regional Planning Commission. The town has a transit dependent population who could greatly benefit from expanded transit service to access employment sites, medical <coughs> facilities, as well as service to retail destination. The town of Merrimack supports a public outreach effort that will gauge the interest of private citizens, businesses, and public entities in expanded public transportation in the Nashua region. So basically, it's just, as you said, but more expansive. So it's all signed, okay? Thank you. I mean, currently, currently, right now, we use National Transit Authority for paratransit services, if I remember correctly. I only know this because yes. my neighbor, my neighbor up the street, um, uses it to go to uh, plus companies. So the so the question would be, 
you know, do we continue expanding, expanding to keep the paratransit, or do we look at some type of a fixture coming into right. coming into Merrimack? Thanks, Pat. Pat, thank, thank you. you. Okay, let's go back to old business number two, highway garage project financing. Submitted by town manager Eileen Gabinal and finance director Paul McCallie. Go for it. Um, at the last meeting, I believe it was, um, we went through all the different options. Lori and Kyle went through all the different options on the, uh, basically three options for the public <laughs> works facility. Um, and we got a general sense from you and maybe even a vote that said that you wanted to go with option three, which was the wood frame structure. Okay. And um, we, but it says, it doesn't say anywhere in the minutes that you, um, because we didn't ask the question um, whether what the amount you're willing to spend is the, um, the cost is 3.3 million dollars for that um, particular uh, project and um, also for um, how many years you want to do the bond for whether it be 20 or 30 and you have copies in your packet of what a 20-year bond looks like and what a 30-year bond looks like. Right. So although we did agree to the option three, which was the wooden, mm -hmm. we have to make a decision about the amount, 3.3, mm -hmm. and whether it's 20 or 30 years. Okay. Any discussion or is someone ready for a motion or? Yes, Finley. I move that the town of Merrimack bond three point three million dollars over twenty years for the renovation and construction of the highway garage project and move it to a public hearing on February sixteenth, two thousand seventeen. Seconded. Motion made by Finley Rothhouse, seconded by Bill Boyd. Any other discussion? Do we want to go through any of the judge the argument for why twenty versus thirty? Um, can you can you give us some details on the recommendation? Uh, yeah, the biggest uh, reason is the um, mil extra million dollars over the ten extra, extra ten years. So to bond um, the highway garage at three point three million dollars, the interest would be an extra million dollars. If going to if you go into thirty years versus the twenty year bond. Just one thing. Um, in addition, the the amount of money uh, for principal and interest for um, a 20-year bond is um, within $3,000 right. of the cost of the last payment of the uh, retiring bond. So in other words, it fits uh, very well in there, um, except for $3,000. So, um, And that's the most. It that's the most. It decreases over time. Yes. yes. Jackie, do you have a yes, question? Um, um, well, it isn't exactly a question because I'm in uh, favor of this myself. Just with the um, uh, kids, I would recommend getting a 20 year or 15 year mortgage too if they could possibly afford it. <clears throat> but I, I have heard people wonder whether um, the higher amount would even out the tax rate better. What is your the answer? The longer years, you mean? Yes, the 30 year, yes. It's actually um, pretty much the first four or five years, it's the same on the tax rate. Mm -hmm. I believe no it's change. between seven and eight cents mm -hmm. on the tax rate in the first four or five years. For the 20 year bond and the 30 year bond, they're very similar in the payback. Good. Thank you. And the point really is, again, that um, it's not an additional eight cents, right. it's replacing eight when cents that is going away. Mm -hmm. Useful, useful yeah. information. And for both of those reasons is why I moved to 20 years. Okay, any other discussion? Do I get the feeling 20 is the consensus? That's what right? I'm That's, yeah. what, that's, that's what the motion is. Motion is. is. Motion is. Yeah. Okay, motion is made. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, 700. Zero, zero. Okay, under new business, consideration of tentative agreement with NEPBA Local 12 Union. The town will consider ratifying the tentative agreement for a four year contract, 2016 to 2020, with the NEPBA Local 12 Union. And that's the police department, right? Okay. Aline, is there a Yes, um, what, uh, what this contract does 
is it uh, is very similar to the um, to the other five contracts that passed last year, and the major the main goal that the council had in this um, endeavor was to um, to contain the costs of health insurance and to um, give higher deductibles. So we're now at a thousand, three thousand dollar deductible rather than no deductible. So it's a significant, um, as with the other contracts that have passed, this is the same kind of concession as to going with a less expensive, significantly less expensive um, health insurance alternative. So, um, so those are, that's, that is, so the contract um, is for four years. The first year would have been last year uh, because they, they didn't have a contract in place. I, they didn't have an a active contract um, with no increase in wages. Um, this upcoming year would be year two. There would be a 3% increase for in wages. And then um, they would change their health insurance at the same time. The next year, it would be a 3% increase and um, the following year would be a 2% increase. Um, again, um, the total cost of this contract is um, thank you. The, the total contract cost over four years is $250,552 which is um, a total over the four years of eight cents, which is approximately two cents per year. Um, and once again, I uh, just commend everyone for um, working with the unions to try and mitigate some of these health insurance costs because they've really been getting out of control. And as we've discussed before, um, that's nothing that you can necessarily control. They increase it based on usage and that kind of thing, and wage increases you can control. So having kind of rolling back the benefits um, can uh, give the employees more of a reason to participate because they have a $1,000 deductible and a $3,000 deductible. They need to carefully participate in their um, health insurance usage. Any other questions? Okay, a motion. We have a motion. Everybody. Madam Chairman, I move that the town council ratify the tenant agreement reached with the NEPBA Local 12, New England Police, Police Benevolent Association Local 12, police officers, detectives, and sergeants union which provides no increase in the budget of the current 2016-2017 uh, fiscal, year, fiscal year and includes a net cost of $58,795 in the ensuing 2017-2018 uh, fiscal year so that the tenant agreement may be put on the warrant for voter approval at town meeting. Motion made by Tom Mahan, second by? Second. Tom Koenig. Any other questions or comments? Same. Yes. No, just a real quick comment. I appreciate the union stepping to the plate and working with the town to try and accommodate all these different components that come together. So thank you. Great. And I, I would also like to, to express my appreciation and point out that we're already seeing back from insurance companies in general that this kind of an action uh, with the increased deductible by, by employees uh, is in fact getting them to pay attention to their insurance costs and helping to do ultimately what the town needs them to do and um, make sure that they they minimize the cost of the insurance overall. So uh, these kinds of changes, while they're they're more out of pocket, and we're trying to offset that somewhat with wages and things like that, uh, are in fact having a, a physical impact and and doing good things. Excellent. Any others? Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Saying none. Seven zero zero. Okay, minutes. Three sets of minutes. The first Madam, one. 
Madam Chair, move the, the uh, Thursday, January 12th, January 12th, 2017 minutes with some changes. Okay, and they would be what, Bill? Page three, lines four and five, either make that all one paragraph or put a space in there to make it a second paragraph. Line eight, same page. Continues should be continues. Yeah. Page four, line seven. In the middle it reads, there is property abutting fields farm that is going to be A developed. The A should be dropped. Yeah. Page six, lines 13 through 20. It reads, Chairman Harrington read the proposed changes into the record. Can we just double check the language that was used there? Because on line 15, it says treasure, and there's no punctuation there. It's either going to be a colon or a. So if we could just double check that. Double check yeah. and have it verbatim put in there, please. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I had. Can I have a second? Dan Dwyer. Any other changes? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> 700. January 19th. Madam Chair, move the Thursday, January 19th, 2017, Town Council meeting minutes as presented. Motion made by Bill Boyd, second by Eddie. Second. Tom Mayhem. Any changes? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Seven zero zero. January third, twenty third. Um, make a motion. Bill can't do it because he wasn't here. So moved. Dan Dwyer. Any any changes, Dan? No, ma'am. None. Could I have a second, please? Second. Tom Mayhem. Was I here? Yes, you were here. <laughs> you were providing color. Oh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Abstaining? One. Abs so abstaining. Six, zero, one. Uh, Bill Boyd abstaining related to his absence. Comments from the press? Saying none. Comments? We don't see the press here at all anymore. Comments from the public? Also no one. Comments from the council? Yes, Tom, and then Finley. Yes, Madam Chairman. Um, uh, with the uh, pending opening of uh, signing up for uh, office coming up, uh, I will not be seeking re-election uh, this year. We already knew that, so we're not. Yes, I do. Ah. You do. You know that, but <laughs> you, you've known that. Like we, we're supposed to be shy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can if you Sorry, want to. Sadly, <laughs> but I mean, disappointed. Yeah, I, I understand, but you you understand what what the situation is, and um, it's unfair to do something like that with what I have pending, mm -hmm. and uh, the the long time that I would be uh, unable to attend to the office. So it's not proper. For, I don't I don't feel proper in in seeking re-election under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Finley? I'm surprised still, though, I have to admit. But uh, it's uh, when the day comes, Tom will be missed. Uh, by me, absolutely. It's been in the past and will be in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Same um, here. The only thing I want to bring forward is happy birthday to my son, who was a Valentine's baby. But, uh, uh, so um, it's 29. He's not quite to the big one yet, but on its way. Thank you. Almost. Anyone else? Okay, remember we have a meeting Thursday, and hopefully we won't have, this is, the, this, this meeting had to be postponed twice because of snow. Hopefully Thursday we will be able to have the meeting, and uh, I will see you then. Good night, everyone. Motion uh, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Bill Boyd, Tom Mahan, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Good night.